past the point of no return. I was a big Phantom of the Opera fan when I was younger. It is a good episode, though. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 18 of Supernatural Season 5, the 100th episode of Supernatural. I made the mistake of saying an episode back as who Season 4 was, but no, this is in fact the 100th episode. The hotel room that Dean and uh, his uh, half-brother and Zachariah find themselves in is in fact of uh, number 100 to, to help celebrate the 100th episode of this show. Massive landmark, which would only be further precedented by uh, the 200th and then the uh, 300th episode of the show. This episode is a tipping point. It's at the point where Dean is at his most helpless. He has totally pretty much accepted that he's going to be uh, the vessel for Michael. Sam is desperately trying to keep him from making that decision even though he's fighting a losing battle. Bobby and Castiel are standing off to the side trying to work through their emotions and their anger. All the while Zachariah is trying to get back into heaven's good graces one last time even though he's basically so down and out that he's drinking at a bar and just being like man I can't do anything I used to be the top man now I'm down here with you filthy humans that part is actually really really funny when Michael speaks to him and the guys are off on the side going Arr! and Zachariah's like yeah what do you want oh another chance I, I promise I won't let you down I do like how there is so much in this episode and for the most part it is very decently condensed if maybe a little bit too fast considering the uh, re-emergence of Adam. Uh, he's kind of just like swing-digged into this episode. They don't even really kind of explain how his body is whole, even though he should be surely, surely dead. But as Dean goes through the motions of basically accepting to be Michael's vessel, I like how Sam is now kind of in a mirror situation of that of what Dean was in in season four with trying to convince his brother to not do the thing that he is most evident on. Sam is going about it a much better way than Dean is. Whereas in season four, both of them were trying to do the right thing, but going about it different ways. Technically speaking, Dean is, and so is Sam, but Dean sees a good possibility, whereas Sam is going off of hope. I like how Sam is able to find him, and just his confrontation with uh, Dean is much less violent, it's much more somber, it's much more speaking brother to brother. But I still like little elements of the episode, like when Dean puts his box together full of things of like basically giving off to Bobby, and there's actually a letter that I never actually paused and read it, but I actually found it here. It says, Sam and Bobby, given what's about to happen, I'll be surprised if this package ever finds you, but if it does, I want you both to know that what I'm doing isn't about giving up. John taught us better than that. This is about time. We've run out. Left the Impala and Cicero. Where I'm going, we don't need roads. I know you'll look after her for me, Bobby. You've taken more for the team than anyone could ever ask. That makes you an honorary Winchester in my book. Sam, you told me once that you pray every day. Not sure if that's still true. Probably isn't, but if it is, give it one last try for me. And Sammy, one Winchester lost to this fight is enough. But I definitely enjoy this element. I like seeing Dean at his most hopeless. And then Castiel is pissed. He is so mad at Dean for wanting to give in when he has given up so much. He's literally given up on the, his entire family of who he's been a part of for thousands of years. So when he beats the shit out of him, he's kind of the aggressor part that Sam can't be, but it's fun to see it, just to see Castiel just absolutely wallop on him. But also speaking of Cass kicking ass, he actually has a really great fight scene with some angels on Adam's death site. When he pulls him out of the ground, he pulls him over to Bobby's house, they have that conversation. They have a conversation with Adam, technically speaking for the first time because what they were speaking with before was a ghoul. This is the actual Adam, so they have to kind of reintroduce themselves, and that actually goes by quite smoothly, considering the issue you think you would run into in a situation like that, in terms of a writing perspective. But it still works out really well. Like I said, it's just a little bit quick that Adam is just there, and they don't really kind of address the whole idea of him, you know, not being a rotting corpse, but it's angel, magic, whatever. But the whole idea is Zachariah is using Adam as bait. He's coercing him to say yes as a backup plan, 
even though he actually is a backup plan, but at the time they're still trying to get Dean on their side. They lure Sam and Dean to the house, to the building, which actually is the same building that they use for changing channels, if I'm correct. And they pull Dean into the room with Adam and Zachariah. And then there's this very conflicting moment for Dean. Sam and Adam are both puking their guts up because of Zachariah's powers. And eventually he says, yes, I, I, I say yes to you guys, but I have some conditions. And he puts Zachariah into that corner. He's like, when I say yes, I want them to fry your ass. Zach's like, say what? And I love that little twitch. The dialogue changes. Dean can, takes control of the conversation because he's like, who do you think they're going to agree with now more? You or me? In the end, there's a great little battle of wits here and ends with Dean stabbing Zachariah right through the gut and up through his head. It's a fantastic kill. It's the end of a very good villain. Uh, Zachariah is still, in my opinion, one of the more underappreciated villains of this show. He has a fantastic run throughout the whole show and he ends pretty on, on a pretty decent note, I admit that maybe if they kept him around a little longer, you kind of would have become a wet joke. I'm happy they never brought this character back. He had a perfect amount of time. It was still like satisfying to see this kill. Because there's a lot of emotion you feel. You almost feel pity for him at the beginning of the episode, but then you feel a great triumph when he is defeated because he is a dick, he is a dick bag. And then as they're trying to leave, Adam is stuck in the room and he disappears. So now we're kind of in this mystery spot of whether or not Adam has been taken by Michael, whether he's actually going to be Michael's vessel. All the while, Dean and Sam have rejuvenated their brotherhood and their commitment to taking on the devil and basically taking what comes at them. Overall, this episode is very solid. It has some very good story writing. It has some very solid action pieces. It has some good character development. If anything, there is a lot that happens in this episode that maybe it happens a little bit too fast. There's a lot going on. But essentially, they couldn't make this a two-parter because the next episode is a goddamn banger with the Hammer of the Gods. So I'm very interested to talk about that episode. So in the end, my final rating for Point of No Return is a 6 out of 7. It is a landmark episode, not only in terms of it being the 100th episode of the show, but it also had a massive turning point for this season. And it perfectly sets up the next four episodes being the conclusion of Season 5. Like I said, there's a little bit of issue with the pacing, so it doesn't get the perfect rating, but it's still very very good episode. So let's see what you guys had to say about this episode. Point of No Return, Cass is a beast in this episode. He's coming in clutch for the boys even after finding out God doesn't care. He kills a bunch of angels in this episode then clears the room for the boys to try and get at him. Cass is totally the MVP for season four and five. I also like how the ending is starting to take shape in this episode. Michael is going to be wearing Adam Zachariah's always welcome as a bad guy. And his death would be a huge deal because I believe this is the first time an angel is killed by not another angel. Well, hang on, actually, we have seen demons kill angels, but I think I get where you're coming from, a human killing an angel. I do find it kind of weird how Dean just changes his mind all of a sudden. He's just Mr. Hopeful, even after, though, you'd think it would have been even worse for Dean. No more cast. Michael took Adam only up. The uh, upside is Zachariah being stabbed in the face. From the start of the episode to the ending, nothing has changed to avert the apocalypse. Actually, it's for sure worse. So I always question Dean's turn, but I do like this episode mostly because you see the force of the angels and how it, if it were just the boys, they would be totally screwed. Yeah, no, um, I got where you're coming from there, but I think it's more so Dean would rather side with his brother. Like, I think their bond is reforged again uh, to the point where he trusts them. I and mean, it's slowly, like you said, heading towards that ending of terms of being able to uh, trust Sam with very, very, very big decisions. Adam, poor guy can't catch a break. Usually when a character comes back to life in a series, it's cause for, it's cause for celebration, but for this, it's the worst case scenario. Not only does he come from, with baggage of what Adam represents, but he also is basically a ticking time bomb that they desperately have to try and defuse. Adam was trying to do what he thought was right, only to be once again be used by, uh, abused by supernatural forces just because of the family he was born into. I feel that this sucks, definitely for him, but I feel he got done absolutely 100% dirty by season 15. We all know what we're talking about there. Point of No Return is one of my 
favorite episodes of the season, personally. I really love the character stuff in what, uh, whether it's Dean continuing to completely lose faith or Castiel beating the hell out of Dean. That is a great part. I also love the final scene against Zachariah where Dean regains his faith and is finally able to understand that there is a way they can win. The only downside is Adam as a character has never really worked for me and I feel he kind of just exists as a plot device, so I never really cared about his part in this episode. I definitely can understand where you're coming from there. I am happy that he was introduced in the previous season, so he doesn't just kind of come off as a one, as a, whoa. Maybe a little bit more of a build-up to him could have been done, um, but that's possibly the only kind of criticism I would have. Point of No Return is a fantastic episode. I remember when I first watched this season, I knew they were going to bring back Adam from Michael, or bring back Adam in some way. I love seeing Zachariah get what he deserved. He was a good villain, one of my favorite episodes. I really thought Dean was gonna say yes to Michael. This episode really had a pretty desperate moment. It was really fun to watch. Point of No Return is a good episode. I have several points that bother me. One, Adam's body was burned by Dean and Sam, so how are the angels able to bring him back? I actually have nothing to defend that. That's a hundred, that's a very good point. Maybe he's pulling him out of, no, he can't be pulling him out of, no, never mind. You 100% you got that. Why didn't they put Adam in Bobby's room in the basement? If they were so worried about him getting away and calling the angels and then they all left and only Bobby in a wheelchair was there to stop Adam from leaving. My favorite part though was when Dean killed Zachariah. My rating for this is a five out of seven. Very good criticisms, very freaking good criticisms. It was so satisfying to see Zachariah being killed by Dean. He was one, he was he had become such an unbelievable jerk at this point. Very, very good villain. Glad that our old Dean came back in this episode. Yeah, he was pretty much broken for some time, but he was able to redeem himself for Sam, Castiel, and Bobby. The only thing, and this is a really small thing that bugs me in this episode, that he didn't do a good job of making clear what makes uh, what happens to Adam at the end. How are we supposed to interpret that scene where he gets trapped in the angel light? Was he kidnapped by Michael? Was he Adam then being tortured by Michael? So you would say yes. I mean, after this episode, we don't see Adam again until Swan Song, where he is a vessel for Michael. Him saying yes to Michael happens off screen. Kind of weak, in, in my opinion. Couldn't the writers have at least given us one scene between Adam and Michael in a similar fashion to Nick and Lucifer? Again, another good criticism of this episode, actually. Uh, I like the ambiguity, admittedly, um, and I kind of figured that he was going to become, he's going to say yes. I love the point of no return. The opening scene with Zachariah and Stuart was brilliant. Yeah, it is a very good one, as they seem to be bonding, yet quickly shows how humans are just collateral damage without a drop of compassion. Sam's trust in Dean's, Dean's love and family, Adam's innocence all come together in this perfect band of brotherhood to smite the enemy. Yeah, nope, all good points. I, I'm happy that someone pointed out the opening because I love the opening. It's one of my favorite parts. One of my favorite openings in, in the whole show. It's a history. Point of No Return is without a doubt one of my favorite episodes in the entire show. I love literally everything about this episode from start to finish. From the character drama interaction between each other, the action sequences, editing, and special effects. The jokes also land in this episode and I love how the last scene really cements Sam and Dean's trust and will to stopping the Judo-Christian apocalypse. I will say that I consider no no noteworthy is that when it comes to the 200th and 300th episode, you can tell it's pandering to the fans. With the 100th episode, it focuses on the story and what we love about Sam and Dean and those who join their side for fighting the good fight. No, I'm glad you enjoyed this episode because I, I very much enjoyed this episode as well. This episode has some really satisfying moments, particularly seeing Zachariah finally getting exactly what it deserves. Sam and Dean also have some serious emotional moments with, with Dean going back and forth with his decision regarding Michael, making it much more satisfying when he chooses Sam in the end. And Castiel, man, it feels good to see this character have some initiative and actual presence in the show instead of being benched in favor of Jack. How th isn't this moment when he lashes out to Dean, one of people's favorites, um, that actually mirrors one of my favorite moments, I'm going to guess here, but I think it's from season eight, where Castiel is controlled by Naomi and he beats Dean to near on death. It very much mirrored this scene, but it went obviously a lot further, and it's why I actually like that scene. That part in season eight is what turned me around for Supernatural. I thought it was going down the complete crapper at that point, but that episode turned me around. With that said, this episode has one major problem, Adam. I'm sorry I can never get behind this character. Much like any of Dad's creations, he's just a lazy fan fiction. Like, wouldn't it have been nice if the Vin Winchesters had another brother? Yeah, like, everyone had a third wheel and stuck in the mud. I've never understood why people like Adam. To me, he was exactly what I was expecting. A whiny brat that made John look completely unlikable and contributing nothing to the story. This unfortunately continues here because, frankly, there wasn't any other character uh, that his any way his character could go. He was made purely as a deus ex machina for Dean and his situation with Michael. 
But the thing that bothers me most is the actor. He crashed and burned in five young adult movies before finally returning to the show, show and nuking his career. I hate guys like him. That kind of answers a question about where on earth he went. I always found it odd that I've just never seen him in anything. If you have an attitude and if you have uh, a opinion that's higher than yourself at that point, especially when you're starting, it can really kind of jank you. And also just Hollywood is just... Yeah. I never want to be involved with it in terms of an acting thing. Point of Return is probably the best episode of the 100th episode series, even though I did enjoy the other two quite a bit. This is one of my favorites of the series, full of memorable scenes, the humorous interaction at the bar with Zachariah turned horrible, the boys meeting Adam, Dean rejecting his brother, and telling him he no longer believes in him, Cass beating the hell out of Dean and Zachariah's death. I love how Dean tricks him so simply, but in a way that makes sense, getting Zach distracted, letting his guard down. Very happy to see the boys back on the same page after this. I'm so glad that Adam was brought back into the story instead of being dropped in season four. Sucks that his fate is to, is to the wind, up and abandoned in hell, with both Sam and Lucifer making it out well ahead of him, only to be brought back and <laughs> arbitrarily killed in season 15, but for the sake of this episode, he's used well here. Alright guys, thank you for your comments, very much appreciated. Now, let's talk about Hammer of the Gods. I am so excited to watch this episode. This was one of the few that had a rerun, because I think right after this episode they had a break, so the next following Thursday they just re-showed this episode again and I totally willingly watched it. It was so so good. If I'm correct I might be wrong but I'm gonna have to check the DVD case. Give me guys the thoughts about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. If you guys like this video leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe until then I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show Undergrads. It's been a while but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.